boy, are we excited and ready for Michael Penix's preseason debut. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast. You are daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. We're helping you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So if you don't know me, I'm your very humble podcast host, Aaron Freeman, a.k.a. Sirius Black, a.k.a. Mr. Drew, a.k.a. the Jolly Green Giant, a.k.a. Mr. A.k.a. And I, of course, been covering the Falcons for almost two decades, formerly at Falcfans.com, RIP, still going strong on this illustrious podcast. And I thank each and every one of you that is an everyday of this pod that goes strong with me each and every day because you make this podcast your first listen or first watch of the day. And all you got to do to become an everyday or subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. It's that easy to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. So we are recording this episode with, alongside Jarvis Davis of Locked On Sports Atlanta on Thursday, but most of you are probably listening or watching this on Friday. So tonight, the Atlanta Falcons, if you're catching us on Friday, will be taking on the Miami Dolphins in their 2024 preseason opener. We'll discuss the expectations for rookie quarterback Michael Penix Jr., some of the young defensive players, Jarvis will tell us what, if anything, he learned from Falcons two days of joint practice down in Miami and what other nonsense, you know, me and Jarvis are going to get into by the end of the episode. But I'm going to start things off with a mini rant, just a small one, right? You know, every year I complain about this, but, you know, I think people tend to think the pre and preseason is means preview of the regular season. And it's like, no, that's, that's not what the preseason is about. It's about figuring out who's going to make your roster. What do you have in the young unproven guys? You know, whether that's a rookie like Michael Penix or that second or third year guy that you're hoping to see make that big jump that he can be, you know, go from a, a non-existent rookie to an actual contributor and starter. But of course that always falls on deaf ears. But uh, you know, the one player that everybody's going to be glued to watching tonight is Michael Penix. We know he's going to play. We don't know how much. I'm hoping we'll get an entire first half. But Jarvis, I want to pick your brain on sort of what your expectations are, what you'll be paying attention to when you watch Michael Penix play. I'll go first. Right, Watching him in college, I had some concerns about some things that he might struggle with transitioning to the NFL. Some of the mechanical issues led to some inaccuracy. You know, So I want to see how clean his footwork is tonight, how he handles pressure. Can he make some of those off-structure plays? You know, But we know. Michael Penix can sling it, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. But it's kind of like the combine, right? Fast guys run fast. Like, Michael Penix has a big arm, so he's go, he going to sling it. I want to see him operate the offense. But that being said, that's my perspective on Michael Penix's debut. What's yours? What are you looking for with Michael Penix tonight? Uh, I'm like you, man. I want to see the arm. I want to see – I want, I've already got a chance to kind of see in person at practice, but I want to see it with the live bullets flying, right? So because that's the thing that, that really matters because – you know, there's one thing to be able to go through your techniques and go through your practice and everything and working on plays and all that different stuff. And a lot of that stuff is scripted, especially when you're talking about inner squad practices. So now that you have the joint squad practice, you start to get a little peek into what that looks like. I know we're going to jump into that a little bit later on, but as far as when you, once you get into the game, there are no, there's no game plan. Like this is going to be, live reaction like this is what we do and here's what you do and we're gonna figure out what what's gonna happen from that point on and i'll be interested to see who what what, what that wide receiver group looks like because I, I feel like he has a really he had a really nice connection with rondell moore unfortunately he's he's injured and and i know you talked about it on your show we just talked about it on a, on the atlanta sports party as well it it, it just i want to see what that connection looks like what that that accuracy you know looks like when when it's it's going against live action against people who are don't necessarily know what your plays are or they haven't been practicing with you and, and are familiar with familiar with everything that you do as far as tendencies go. So I think for me overall, I want to see him going up against that live defense, live action, real NFL players, right? Um, most of the guys are more likely he's going to be going up against guys 
if he gets the amount of time, playing time that I feel that he is going to get, I feel like he's going to be going up against guys that are actually going to be on NFL roster. So I, I think that that's the thing that I'm most excited about. And last but not least, can you justify that eighth overall pick in this game? <laughs> you know, because I, I, Lord knows when they first initially picked him, I was just like, oh, my gosh, what? Michael Penix, okay, quarterback, all right. Y'all just spent $100 million guaranteed bread. So I feel like there are a lot of fans out there. You know, like I said, I've gotten a chance to see him, so I've come off of that some. But there are a lot of fans out there like, hey, man, we should have never taken no quarterback. If you give him Kurt all this money, we should have got somebody on defense. So I feel like in order to convince those folks that are still out there, I'm sure you people who listen or watching this thing, I know y'all feel that way. I get it. I understand. So I, I feel like he has something to prove as far as justifying that eighth overall pick and i feel like he's gonna do it i mean it's fair I, I think you put it a great way jarvis like practices and all this stuff it's scripted right and in games is unscripted it's like you, you know you got to improvise and whatnot it's not as if teams are really like game planning against you but they're going to do some things that you're not expecting that you haven't seen before because there's actually people trying to hurt you especially if you're a quarterback because put you on the ground you, yeah you, you spent the last two weeks eight and eight you know if someone's trying to hurt you, then, you know, they ain't going to be around much longer. <laughs> so, you know, there's some other guys on that other team that are like, I, you know, my ability to, you know, collect that check in the NFL is based off of my ability to hurt you. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's kind of the core of football. But, that you know, awesome. I think that's a great way of putting it. You know, I'm, I'm also curious to see kind of what Zach Robinson's offense looks like. Again, you know, you get vanilla versions of offense and defense in the preseason as, as you're talking about. But like, you know, just getting that sort of what's the vanilla version of this? What's what's the yeah. most basic version of this offense? And then when you can start to envision what the more advanced version of this offense that you're going to see from guys like Kirk Cousins, especially as the season progresses, as they get, you know, grow that cohesion. That's kind of the other thing that I'm sort of glimpsing to see. And so you you mentioned the Rondell Moore of it all. And yeah, you're right. It, it seemed like him. Rondo Moore, Casey Washington were probably the guys that seem to have the best rapport. So I think this sure. gives an opportunity not only for Casey Washington to maybe, you know, shine with Michael Penix on the field, as well as who's going to be that other guy. Like, you know, that's, again, going back to what I said earlier about the preseason, like you, you get to find out about some of these guys. Is it going to be Josh Ali? Is it going to be Chris Blair? Is it going to be Austin Mack or somebody like that that's going to be able to step up and fill that void and, and, and take advantage of that opportunity and, and, we may be talking about that player Friday night when we do the postcast or, or Saturday or whatever and be like, hey, this guy stepped up and he's now in the conversation to, to be on this roster and be one of the 53 guys that the Falcons wind up keeping. But Jarvis, you know, I know you, you know, you, you don't care about these skill players, right? You, you're, you're here to talk really about don't. the big boys up front. Yeah. And so let's let's talk about the big boys up front uh, and what we're expecting from those guys in some of their preseason debuts as well as others that, you know, we haven't really seen, you know, play in a football game. At least we've seen them on the practice field, but we haven't seen them play in a football game, you know, in, in, you know, less than a year and whatnot. And so we'll get into all of that guys as we continue today's locked on Falcons. Now, passion drive patience. It is the formula for winning championships. And it's also what's going to keep your ride or die alive. eBay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Whether you're looking for superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, led headlights, so much more, whether you're into speed, power or style, that, that sounds like the Atlanta Falcons offense Jarvis with speed, power and style, but Hey, you know, you're into those things. eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. So as we talk here with Jarvis Davis of Locked On Sports Atlanta, uh, here on your first listen here on Locked On Falcons, you know, check out your second listen, Locked On Fantasy Football. I'm sure those guys will be talking quite a bit about, you know, this upcoming preseason action and who are the sort of fantasy buys and, and sleepers and all that sort of stuff. Locked On Fantasy Football, of course, is, you know, free and available on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So 
Jarvis and I are together, you know we're going to talk trenches, guys. So, you know, whether it's Ruka Roro, Brandon Dorless, Braylon Trice, Zion Lowe, Zach Harrison, Arnold Ebiketti, Troy Anderson, J.D. Bertrand, or some of the other young players that we have in this defensive front seven. You know, for me, Jarvis, when I'm looking at, you know, tonight's action on, on Friday night against the Dolphins, it's not really specifics like it was with Michael Penix. I just kind of want to see guys go out there and make plays. I want guys to go out there, play fast, physical. You know, we're getting vanilla versions of both of these teams in Miami and Atlanta. And it's just like, go execute, go shed a block, go fit that run gap, go make that tackle, all those various things. But I'm curious when we're talking about the big boys up front, you know, what are some of your eyes going to be looking at? What are you going to be keyed on with some of these guys? Obviously, I'm looking for situational stuff, right? I first off, I understand that you know there are some guys that aren't going to be playing, you know, uh, more than likely. Uh, Grady Jared, Dave on I feel like those guys aren't going to be out there. Better not play those guys, <laughs> right? Exactly. Like we don't need to see them. We know yeah. what they bring to the table. Yeah. So we know. We know. I, I know those guys are disruptors in the running game. So. I want to see who are going to be those guys when those guys potentially come out of the game. Who can be rotational guys that come in and say, hey, these guys are going to be um, stout against the run. I feel like you know, Smith Williams is, is a guy that can be in that in that mold, not necessarily from the interior side, but for that outside line, linebacker spot in the base defense. I feel like he, he has the potential to be that. But is Brandon Doyle that's going to be a guy that say, hey, man, I can come in and be that versatile guy that can line up on the outside and on the inside on 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 on, on situational um uh, uh, stuff like like a pass rushing when it's on third downs or Zion Lowe can he solidify himself as that nose that come in and be a be a sub guy and or is he a practice squad guys I think those are some of the questions that that needs to be answered um for for, for me and of course Ruka Roro Ro, I feel like that's the number one guy because he is a he's a he has a personality you understand you know how from a from a likability standpoint why the Falcons you know grab drafting him in the second round and I feel like he needs to justify the pick too you talking about trading up you know to go to go get a uh, get a guy like that okay why 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 did y'all trade up to go get him and then, you know, at the end of the at first quarter or second quarter, however long he plays, I need to, I need to be sitting here saying to myself, like, okay, I get it. I understand why they drafted this young man. And he needs to be a guy that two or three years from now, we don't need to be questioning why he was drafted in the second round like somebody else you, uh, you mentioned. Who, who could you possibly refer to, Jarvis? <laughs> no, I, I'm not gonna bring that up because we're talking about trenches right now. So okay. I'm, you know, you know who I'm talking about. You I know who you're talking show. about. But I know I you guys. Listeners know who you're talking about. I think in faithful the the everydayers they know exactly who I'm talking about. I don't know who I'm talking about, man. The linebacker dude, you know, linebacker. 44. You know yeah. what I'm saying? 44. But but yeah, I, I think. But uh, but all in all seriousness, no, I, I'm really interested to see. You know, uh, a guy like Braylon Trice, you know, what he brings to the table because, you know, Arnie Abiketti, man, he's been doing, you know, doing some doing some some, some good things in, in, in this training camp this year. I feel like this is a breakout year for him. It has to be uh, because I, I know that we've seen the development over the years. Now it's time to kind of go ahead and have that breakout season that everybody's been clamoring for, um, including myself. So. Uh, I, I think overall, man, that defensive line, what that, what that, what that run stopping from a run stopping standpoint, and what that situational pass rush um, standpoint, I feel like those are gonna, some of these situations I, I'm really interested to see. It's specifically those young guys. Yeah, I think I think that makes perfect sense. You know, I think it'll be interesting to see how some of these guys deal with some of the speed that Miami's going to bring to the table. You know, again, you're not going to get probably really any of the Dolphins starters, but I, I think that's a, gives a great opportunity for some of these young guys. Cause you're, you're not, you, you know, you have a chance. Like that's one of the things that I always enjoy about preseason where it's like, if you can go out there and dominate like second and third string guys, that usually means that you're capable of being a starter. And I'm curious to see if, any of these guys, especially some of those guys that we're talking about, with like an Arnold and Kenny, uh, who I'm assuming will play, but we'll see. Um, you know, can he go out there and 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 dominate? You know, Miami's backup left tackle, right? Right. 
I I know they ain't playing Teron Armstead. So like whoever that guy is, like you know, can you go out there and, and kick that guy's butt and, and make everybody in Miami be like, why are we why are we keeping this guy on the roster? And it's like, yeah, because Arnold Abichetti is a legit dude that made you know this guy like I you know I go back to last year's Miami game where they had Emmanuel Ogba play in that game. And he mm-hmm. was going up against Jalen Mayfield, and he made Jalen oh, Mayfield oh, look pretty rough uh, in that game. And I, I, I kind of want to see the reverse of that against whoever it is in Miami. I want to see that from somebody, especially in that edge room, because uh, as we we've been discussing, like we we know what the Falcons have, you know, at the top of the depth chart along the interior of the D line. We're we're excited to see what they have at the bottom of the depth chart on the, along the interior D line with some of these young players, like you're talking about with Rook and Dorlas and and all those other guys, but we don't really know what this team has at the top of the depth chart at, at edge, right? We know what Lorenzo Carter is. We, we think yeah. we know what James Smith-Williams is based off of what they've done in the league for four or five years, but we don't really know what Arnold Abichetti and D'Angelo Malone and and some of these other, Braylon Trice, as you mentioned, what these guys are, are bringing to the table. And so that's that's kind of where, I, going back to what I said, like I just want you to go out there and make some plays, make, make people go, oh, okay, I, I didn't see that before. Uh, you know, I know Arnold Abichetti mentioned you know, post practice in terms of using a spin move or something like that. Like, you know, what where's that pass rush repertoire at? Like, you do you have you develop moves, and it's, especially for a player like D'Angelo Malone, who, who's on the roster bubble. You know, what what type of development have you been doing in the background? What have you put in the work behind the scenes? And, and sort of now we have to stand up and be like, why is this guy listed as third string? Maybe he should be getting some run. All those sorts of things. I think you bring I bring I think you bring up a great point because and I think D'Angelo Malone is a, a, a very specific point, right? Because we talked about how he's kind of fluctuated between a tweener in between here, right? Because he's a outside linebacker edge guy first coming in and then they went to a four three and then he definitely wasn't a defensive end in a 4-3. And then now he's back to outside linebacker slash edge guy. And, and, and it's just kind of when you talk about going like through different systems, he's been in three different systems since he's been here. And when, when you think about having to go through all of these changes, I even talked to Richie Grant about this too. And, and he said, for, for his standpoint, he, he said it made him feel like he got an advantage because of – knowing different schemes, having different knowledges. Okay, well, if if, if uh, Dean Pease plays this coverage this way, maybe, you know, uh, uh, Jimmy Lake can be a guy that, that plays it this way, but I can take something from that, the way we played it with Pease, and kind of add it to and sprinkle a little sauce on it and to maybe give me an advantage when I'm trying to the, um, the, disguise coverages and everything like that. So, But I feel like D'Angelo – needs to be able to have a, 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 a an outing like you talked about with that you're looking for from um, on every Katie because like when you're on that bubble when you've been that guy that hasn't necessarily shown really anything you know I've seen some stuff that I like from him but he's not never been that real consistent guy because of his in between tween right because we don't know what he is what is he like there's one thing to be versatile, but if we don't, if it's to the point where we don't know what you're really, really good at, that's a problem. That's an issue, and that's what's going to put you on the bubble. So I feel like a guy like D'Angelo Malone is on that bubble, like you mentioned, and I feel like he has to be one of those guys where you're saying, "Well, wait a minute, why this dude not coming in on third and long?" <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a great point, Jarvis. Like, yeah, we've seen flashes from D'Angelo Malone, but. Not enough. That it kind of makes him kind of forgettable. You're like, oh yeah, Diaz Malone's right. kind of here. And, and you, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you kind of want to have him to have you know whether it's it's against Miami or at some point this summer, you want him to have that outing where it's like, oh yeah, D'Angelo Malone's here too. Like, oh, we got mm-hmm. something cooking here potentially. So hopefully he can do that as well as so many other young guys that are you know scrapping and clawing for these roster spots. So we'll see what happens. Uh, on Friday night in this preseason action against Miami, but it's kind of a culmination of a week in Miami. And, you know, I want to pick Jarvis's brain on what, if anything, he learned about the Falcons during their joint practices against the Dolphins earlier this week. And so we'll do that to wrap up today's Locked on Falcons. 
guys, it is the NFL and, you know, preseason, the training camp. It's always about finding the right quality professionals that fit your team. And if you run a small business, you want to do the same, but you don't have to sweat it out in the South Florida or Georgia heat. All you got to do is go to LinkedIn jobs. They have the tools that help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just any old job board because they're going to help you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else. Even those that might not even be actively searching for a new job, but are just open to the perfect role in any given month. Over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place on LinkedIn. 86% of small businesses get qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn by posting your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And guys, I want to tell you that today's episode is also sponsored by BetterHelp. And, you know, you ask yourself, you know, what are my self-care non-negotiables? right? Maybe your schedule is packed because you're dealing with kids activities or big work projects or, you know, whatever. And it's, you know, easy in those situations to kind of let your priorities slip. And it's hard to make time for things even when we know those things are can make us happy, right? So when you don't feel like you have enough time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy become more important than ever. Therapy has taught me positive coping skills like you can only control what you can control. And I use those skills every Sunday when I sit down and watch the Atlanta Falcons play football. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try, right? It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I know when I signed up for BetterHelp, you know, a big thing for me was like I wanted a person of color that, you know, I could relate to with a lot of things. And BetterHelp allowed me to do that very easily. So never skip therapy day with BetterHelp by visiting BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. So Jarvis, going back over the week, what, if anything, you, you did you take away from the Falcons in these joint practices? I know I discussed on yesterday's episode that I, I feel a smidge, just a smidge. A little bit more hopeful, a little bit more confident that this defense might be, you know, actually worth a damn or whatever. But was there anything for you uh, from these joint practices that you took away? Uh, I'm with you because when you have local beat writers for the Miami Dolphins questioning the Dolphins offensive line and their ability to protect Tua and in going into the 24 season, 2024 season, man, I, I'm not I can take it with a grain of salt for sure. but. But when you think about just the notion of a defensive line, the Falcons defensive line being able to make people question the, the Dolphins offensive line, because Lord knows we've questioned the Falcons defensive line for the past 15 years, uh -huh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so when you have that narrative coming out of Miami after these joint practices, man, you got to have a little smidgen. If even it's just a little <laughs> micro organism size bit yeah. of optimism, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. you know what? And these people don't give a crap about the Falcons doing well. You know, they just evaluating their squad or, or looking at the team that they've been covering for however long. So when when you start hearing those things coming out of Miami like that, I, I get really excited about it because that's why I'm really looking forward to this game because you hear things about Zach Harrison how he's getting through and and, and doing his thing, man. I, and just to see how he's developed from, I remember talking to him when he first came in and, and just trying to figure out where to find a place to stay, man. You know, in, in OTA, rookie uh, rookie minis or whatever, and to now just the end of the last season, you know, coming on, getting a few sacks up under his belt and then not coming into, the, and then being at, under the tutelage of a, a guy like Calais Campbell who's all very similar as far as build and stature, right? Because we know defense alignment who have that height, man, they have an issue. And I used to deal with this myself. When you're tall, you like to see, see what's going on. So all these little, little short munchkin centers and guards with all this doggone who only on six one, they're going to get up under them pads and they're going to hold what they got until as long as they possibly can. So there is a, a synergy that I felt like that was between those two because they, had to deal with the same things, you know, obviously coming up and how they were built. So 
for me to hear those things about, you know, off, Dolphins offensive line, what can they do? Are they going to be able to protect to the, the $212 million investment? Like, oh, yeah, that's like what I like to hear. And I'm looking forward to seeing if they can repeat that uh, um, tonight as well. Yeah. Yeah, Jarvis, it's like I, I can only be a smidge because it, it's too good to yeah. be true. Oh, right? We've been burned yeah. so many times with the Come Falcons on. D line. It's like, OK, all right. Like, yeah, I love to hear it. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I absolutely love yeah. to hear it. But we, we will see. We will see in September yes. whether or not they can live up to that. But you're right. I think, you know, if they can get after it uh, uh, on Friday against the Dolphins like that's, you know, it's just like, OK, OK, I'm feeling I'm feeling a little bit better. You know, the other thing I think is worthwhile from um you know, these joint practices, you know, hearing Kirk Cousins talk about coaching up Kyle Pitts. And it's like, it's Man. nice to have a grown up in the room, right? It's, oh it's nice gosh, to have that, oh. right? Oh, you know what, man? When I, when I heard Kirk talking about that, it just, I kind of like it too. We talked about this on Atlanta Sports Party like yesterday. <laughs> I like it to somebody who uh, didn't necessarily read that many books coming up. You know, on their own, you know, they did the ones in school, but mm -hmm. they started reading a couple of books. And then the next thing you know, you hear them talking about, yeah, man, you should be able to do this and do that and do that. We're like, wait a minute, bro. You all changed up on us a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like they're enlightened in like the previous definition of woke. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you start calling them that, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, woke means something totally different now. I don't know how yeah. it happened, but we ain't going to get into all that. But, but it just seems like Kyle is like enlightened now. He's a little bit more woke. You know, the first part of that, you know what I'm saying? And so for him to be talking about Kirk in this light, just how it, it's different. No, no shade against, you know, uh, uh, the other dude, you know what I'm saying? Or the other dude. But I understand what it's like to be in a room with a grown up, like you mentioned, a guy who has a great understanding of where you're supposed to be. Not only what he's supposed to be doing, but where you're supposed to be and where you should be once that ball gets ready to come out, because it's coming out regardless of whether you're there or not. And if you're not there, I'm going to be able to hold you accountable. So to hear that relationship and how it's been going, man, that is, I am just super excited. And it makes me think, but like I said, I'm going to have a smidgen of hope. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I want to see it. I want to see it on the field. I want to see the connection on the field. I heard they've been connected down there in Miami garden. So but yeah, when you hear those things, you kind of understand like how important it is to have grown-ups in the room. Yeah. So uh Jarvis, we'll be back, I guess, with uh postcast. Is is, is Tanitra gonna be with us on Friday night? Well, you know, I gotta make sure I have to do a special invite, you know, for, for Tanitra to show up yeah. preseason stuff. Yeah. But yeah, we will be there for sure. We will be there. Yeah, we I'm will definitely sure. be there. We'll yeah. we'll hold it down, you know, for the for the preseason, but you know, I gotta send a special invitation out to yeah, uh, Mr. Nikki Batiste. To, you know, T T T's gonna, she's gonna be Grady, right? She's gonna be like, I don't want yeah. to play. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you you know what I do, right? She's yeah. the very of this of this uh, post yeah. squad, yeah. no doubt for sure. Yeah, so thousand percent. We, we, we will be back. We'll see if T's there. Yes. Show up, find out. We're we'll still trying back. to prove ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We we got to go through the preseason reps. We're right. we're out here trying to be Zach Harrison and all that stuff. Right, getting our reps in, and, and T's like. Oh, I got, it. I got it. get that contract. You know what I'm saying? Like we try to get that contract, Jack. <laughs> so we'll see if T is there. Check us out. Postcast Friday night. I'll also, of course, be doing a full show myself afterwards for Locked On Falcons, in which you guys can stay up late Friday night if you want to check out, or wait till Saturday Just binge, morning. Man, binge so, on the Falcons, man. Let's go. Yeah. So we will be definitely be back giving you guys the scoop on what we saw in this Friday night action. Very excited that football is back. And, uh, you know, go check us out. Locked on Sports Atlanta, Locked on Falcons, of course. Continue to make us your first listen, second listen, all that and more. All you got to do is subscribe, follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get that insight. And, of course, you know, as you guys peruse all these other preseason games over the weekend, check out Locked on Fantasy Football to get the insights on who sort of popped that's going to, you know, move, climb up the boards in your upcoming, you know, fantasy drafts and Check out all the other great shows, you know, Locked on NFL Draft, Locked on NFL Scouting are, of course, going to be keeping an eye on some of these young players that are going to emerge in some of these preseason games that are going to be the next stars that we're talking about, the next Tua's that are getting $212 million and all that sort of thing. So go check out all those shows. It's all part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.